Hello guys, this is Doron's Movies and today I'll be giving you top 10 strongest artifacts in World of Warcraft. Ranking only the available artifact weapons in game based on their lower power and ignoring other weapons that are not available in game. So without further ado, let's get into the lore. Number 10. Blades of the Fallen Prince Frost Reaper and Icebringer are two weapons crafted from the shards of Frostmourne. Even though the Fabled Sword no longer exists in its true form, it still lives on through these two blades. Frostmourne itself was created by the Natrasim as ornaments of the Lich King, however Nerzol had tricked them and used the weapon in order to draw an artist and corrupt his soul. Frostmourne is the symbol of the destruction of Lordaeron and was the sword that killed many important figures such as Terranus Menethil, Anasterian Sunstrider, Uther the Lightbringer, Draenor Sourfang and many many others. At the end of the Lich King's reign, Ashbringer shattered Frostmourne and from its remains the Blades of the Fallen Prince would be created. As the remaining spirits were subdued, Frost Reaper and Icebringer were brought to life as one of the most powerful artifacts on Azeroth. Number 9. Ashbringer one of the most legendary weapons, the Ashbringer was created just prior to the Undead Scourge invasion. Alexandros Mograine found a mysterious dark crystal dropped by an orc warlock and kept it a secret until dire times arrived. His peers were surprised and they threw holy spells at it and instead of it being destroyed, it turned into pure light. Mograine immediately rushed to Ironforge where Magni Bronzebeard would craft a legendary blade that would be used as one of the signature weapons of the Silver Hand. Ashbringer proved to be insanely effective against Dark Forces, cutting down any undead in sight. For a time, Ashbringer was the hope of the humans that they would cleanse their land, but unfortunately, Alexandros' son, Renault, betrayed him, subsequently corrupting the sword. Eventually, the Lightbringer would be cleansed and brought into the hands of Tyrion, who used it to shatter Frostmourne and put an end to the Scourge once and for all. Since the death of the High Lord, Ashbringer was passed on to the leader of the reformed Silverhand and just as it was once the hope against the undead, now it is a weapon against the Burning Legion. Number 8. Sight of Elune Thousands of years ago, the Sight of Elune was crafted by affixing a fang of the ancient Goldrin to a staff. The weapon itself was created by Belisra Starbreeze in order to control the rage inherent in the pack form. However, this plan completely backfired and instead of stopping the fury of the druids, it just made it worse and transformed them into Vorgan. When the feral Vorgan were banished by Malfurion, this sight would disappear for so long that it was nearly forgotten. Velinda Starsong during the Third War discovered this ancient staff and by focusing on it, she managed to summon the Vorgan. Confused by this, Velinda traveled to Duskwood searching for answers where she was unfortunately killed, trapping the sight of Elune into a cave. From then on, the staff would exchange many hands, but eventually it would be brought back to the druids. Very, very few can use this weapon correctly as it contains untold lunar powers that only an experienced druid would be able to control. The one who wields the sight of a loon is known as Nachlendo, meaning Master of the Fang. Number 7 a lunet. A lunet was a strange and powerful arcane entity that was found in a different plane of existence. Initially, the blue dragonflight accidentally found it thousands and thousands of years ago, tested it and then sent it back to its home realm. 
However, during the War of the Ancients, a highborn sorcerer by the name of Mitre learned of Alunet through a blue dragon. He didn't manage to enslave the entity as it was far too powerful, but he did harness its power, becoming significantly stronger than his highborn peers. After the War of the Ancients, the Art of Arcane was forbidden within the Night Elven society and Mitre drifted away from it, with both him and Alunet being forgotten. It would take many millennia until Guardian Agemen would follow his footsteps and find this strange mysterious magical creature. Agemen easily summoned it and with great effort she managed to bind it to an enchanted great staff. It took her many years to actually be able to wield this powerful weapon with this mysterious entity and it even betrayed her in the battle against Sargeras but eventually she did manage to take control of it. A lunet was used by Agewin and later given to the Kirin Tor that sealed this artifact away in the Nexus Vault. Now with the Legion invasion, the mages of Azeroth once again required a lunet and it is playing a crucial part in saving the world from the demons. Number 6. Ture, Beacon of the Naru Many, many years ago, Demencius the All Devouring was set on destroying the world of Karkora. The mortal denizens of the planet faced annihilation, but unexpectedly, a Naru by the name of Ture sacrificed himself and saved the planet by banishing the presence of the Void. He was completely broken, but his deed was never forgotten and soon enough his fellow Naru gathered his shattered fragments and gifted them to various races across the vast universe to show them what it means to be good. The largest of the fragments was given to the Eredar and the shard itself plummeted like a falling star making the sky over Argus gold for one full week. The fragment was turned into a staff and it would become one of the most important artifacts later on for the Draenei. At one point it actually saved their people when the Burning Legion caught up to them and had nearly overwhelmed them. Today it is used to protect mortal races from darkness once again as the staff of Ture channels unimaginable essence of the light. Number 5. Ganir the Mother Tree Ganir was created at the dawn of the ordering of Azeroth by the Keeper Freya. For millennia it was the source of healing and balance that extended from the Emerald Dream to the physical realm. Eventually the spirit of the demigoddess Saviana was bound to it and when she died in the War of the Ancients, so did the magnificent tree. The abundant life from Ganir completely disappeared but not all hope was lost. The green dragonflight managed to find one single branch from the mother tree with an acorn on it. From this very acorn, Nordrasil would be created and from Nordrasil all other world trees across Azeroth. However, from the actual branch that contained the acorn, the artifact was created that we have today. For many millennia, it was used by the druids to stabilize the Emerald Dream and now with the Burning Legion invasion, it is used by the frontline defenders of Azeroth. The tree that once fell to the demons is now fighting against them 10,000 years later just in a different form. Number 4. The Fist of Ra Den when the titans set out to defeat the old gods and the void on Azeroth, they created the titan forge known as the Keepers. One of them, known as High Keeper Ra, was empowered by Emantul himself and was entrusted with an incredibly powerful artifact known as the Fist of Ra Den. With it in hand, the High Keeper bestowed life on the Mogu race as well as used it in the main battle against the Black Empire and the Old Gods. When Ra found out about the Pantheon dying, he fell into despair and the mighty artifact was thought to have been lost forever. 
However, the August Celestial Schwen safeguarded it, waiting for the right person to pick it up once again and wield the force of the Titans. The Fist of Raden is one of the oldest, most powerful and significant weapons on the entire world of Azeroth. Number 3. Xalatat, Blade of the Black Empire The most ancient weapon from the planet of Azeroth, Xalatat is an incredibly powerful artifact. It is still uncertain how it was exactly created, but some believe that it is actually a claw of Yasharaj himself. Regardless, it contains unimaginable powers that can drive the wielder mad. When the old gods were defeated by the titans, the weapon was actually left on the surface and it wasn't long until it drew in the attention of a troll and soon enough drove him mad. With Xalatat, the troll awakened the Katraxi and this subsequently led to the spread of the old god minions, the Akir, and the major war between the trolls and the renewed Black Empire. Since that point, the weapon has passed many hands, eventually falling into the possession of the Twilight's Hammer that attempted to use it to reanimate another Katrax known as Zakaz in Tirisfall Glades. The attempt was unsuccessful, fortunately, and the weapon absorbed the spirit of the weakened old god general. With its history and the current power, Xalatat is not only incredibly mysterious, but also extremely powerful and now turned against the Burning Legion. Number 2 Ultalesh, the Deadwind Harvester. Many millennia ago, when Sargeras betrayed the titans, he shattered the prison world of Mardum and freed all of the demons. He offered them an ultimatum to join him or perish and most of the demons really had no choice. However, some did refuse and they formed a rebellion against Sargeras. The Dreadlord Uthalesh was the leader, but it wasn't long until he was destroyed by Sargeras with the help of a site that he had recently created. Sargeras renamed the site after the Dreadlord as it has absorbed his soul and the souls of all of the rebellious demons. From that point, the weapon was extremely potent and Sargeras would bestow it upon his most powerful servants. However, the trick with the weapon was that it was loyal until the wielder was mortally wounded and then it would just devour its owner. Because of this, for thousands of years it would constantly exchange many hands. Eventually, Sargeras would take this weapon once again and offer it to an Eredar by the name of Satiel that was sent on a mission to wreak havoc on Azeroth. She was incredibly successful, draining life of thousands of denizens of Azeroth and turning an entire area into a barren wasteland known as the Deadwind Pass. Eventually, she would become so powerful that she actually sought to oppose Sargeras, but that didn't really last long. The Dark Titan defeated her through the Guardian of Tirisfall by the name of Scavel by giving him visions of Saitiel. Today, the weapon is in the hands of the most powerful warlocks on Azeroth and the site created by Sargeras himself is now being used to fight against his forces. And lastly, number 1, Scepter of Sargeras. After the defeat during the War of the Ancients, Sargeras had already planned his next move. Knowing that without the Well of Eternity there is no power in the world that could summon him, he had to be a bit more creative. So he ordered the Eredar to make a tool that would be able to just let a portion of his soul through. He couldn't really get inside in his true form obviously, but something like an avatar of his definitely could be summoned. Hundreds of the best warlocks sacrificed hundreds and hundreds of demons in order to craft the jeweled scepter of Sargeras. When Ajwin finally defeated the avatar of Sargeras, she would then hide this scepter in the tome on the broken shore. Many years later, Nerzul would get his hands on the artifact and use it to create many unstable portals on Draenor, tearing the entire planet apart. 
recently Cold Dan tried to use the scepter for the new invasion, but a warlock had betrayed him and had stolen the artifact. Today, the very personal weapon wielded by Sargeras himself, containing the souls of thousands of demons, is being used against the Burning Legion and the Dark Titan. Alright, and that is all I have for this video. Do keep in mind that all of these artifacts are powerful in their own sense, and in this video I only went through the ones of lore significance, as well as ones of just sheer incredible power. Do leave your own thoughts on the strongest artifact that you think is the strongest in game, and also don't forget to like the video as it really helps out and keeps all the content going. Thanks a lot for taking the time out of a day to watch this video, and see you next time.